So the third market segment you're going to address, uh, I'm going to call it Gig City, yep. but you're really going to be facilitating ultra high band with connections and backhaul. But tell us a little bit about this this fiber extension or kind of the market you see uh, addressing. Yeah. So as you know, the, the environment is changing across the world in terms of the capacity needs and data requirements. As we see more and more densification happening on the outdoor networks, the biggest challenge is how do you get fiber to those locations, right? Mm -hmm. So what we call this is wireless fiber. And there are multiple applications associated with wireless fiber. Number one is outdoor Wi-Fi hotspots. You know, as more and more of these outdoor dense hotspots happen, the biggest challenge is how do you provide backhaul to those sites. Uh, fiber is the most prevalent one and most uh, optimum, but at the same time, it's not everywhere. So we think wireless backhaul for those outdoor hotspots. Secondly, campus networks, as you're connecting campus locations, point to point between enterprises. You know, there's a lot of uh, radio technology out there today, but nobody does it very high quality, high performance, gigabit and low latency, as I mentioned earlier, very low latency. Thirdly, more importantly, as you look at fiber to the home, that's a market that all the operators and carriers have been after. Cable and companies, cable Google, companies, Google, AT&T, AT AT all the big guys, Vodafone, everybody's out there trying to drive to that last mile. And the reality is that we're not going to get there with fiber everywhere. And with wireless fiber today, we can give you up to 300 to 400 meters, multi-gigabit, symmetrical, with very low latency. So think of it like a wire that's extending it and giving you that capability. Okay. Which market do you see attacking first? Well, I think the outdoor Wi-Fi hotspots is a real market because that's happening as we speak. Uh, we're attacking that as the first application. Uh, we do see opportunities in all the different applications. Uh, I think it's, it's, it, think of it as a toolbox, and we're working with operators, carriers, as well as equipment manufacturers to go to market with that. Mm -hmm. And you talked about your secret sauce being that RF software chip capability. Uh, do you and, the beamforming technology. and the beamforming technology. The, the reality is 60 gigas has been around for a long time. There are many companies that have gone bankrupt on 60 gigas, and many companies have products today that do not work. So the challenge with 60 gigas is the alignment of the antennas and making sure when you're in an outdoor environment, as a bird flies by, as things change in the environment, the link remains reliable. Because at backhaul, the operator wants this to be continuously available. It cannot be something that's maybe working, maybe not. So with adaptive antenna technology and beamforming that we have, we provide that stable link all the time and also provide that high capacity uh, and performance because as the link changes, we want to make sure we have that four nines availability, we have that multi-gigabit capability, and with rain fades and other things that change in the environment, this link has to be stable. Do you see yourself as a chip company or do you see yourself out there manufacturing boxes that are integrated with Wi-Fi? What do you, what's your good that's market? A, that's a great question. I think we see ourselves as an enabling player. We enable the technology. We're at the heart a chip company, but we're ready to work with other folks in building solutions. And we look at the ecosystem, a lot of the players are looking at different options to drive it. So we're partnering with lots of folks all across the ecosystem, uh, but our desire is to really make this technology available to everybody. 